Playing poker. Use a story. Story points. These are old friends of agility. They were heavily utilized by extreme programming fans and eventually made their way into Scrum. And let's face it, with heavy Scrum adoption in the past five years or so, what you see around is a little bit of confusion when using these things, especially the planning poker piece. But I promise you, it's actually much simpler than it looks. So let's get started. What is planning poker? Like the name implies, it is a gamified way, poker, way of doing planning. The first one to experiment with it and to actually describe it very well is James W. Grenning, and in the, it was in the early 2000s. And planning poker helped teams amplify their estimation and organization before diving into work. Now, to understand why using this sort of planning, I would like to remind you, or maybe tell you for the first time, that even though you can use all these techniques separately, back then they almost kind of came together to support each other, really. So you have planning poker, but you also have user stories and you have story points. So let's look at each of them. Let's start with user story. So they create the requirements in the light of what the customer actually gains. That's the first step into understanding and estimating work. We want the stories to be highly valuable because we do first what matters most. And we want the stories to be small because we want to gather feedback quicker. Once the stories are written, it's time to estimate them. And you could use, and it was originally used, a deck of cards indicating how many days it would take to complete them. They were ranging from one to 10 days. But then, you know, what used to happen, I am sure it doesn't happen anymore, right? That when a manager saw dates, what is it that they did? They took those dates and applied it that way for delivery. So there was no buffer for the teams. That's when people decided to abandon dates and use something a little bit more interesting or funky like the Fibonacci sequence. The point was, how can we organize our backlog by sorting through what is complex or by sorting through what might be actually simple but takes a long time to be done and things of that nature. And also, how do we make sure that the folks estimating are all the people that actually are doing the work? And not only that, consider estimating work relative to each other. That is to say that if we are now developing a new feature for our mobile app, we look into all the other things that we delivered before and then we compare them. So is this new thing that we are going to add more complicated than the login page, but maybe a little less complex than the email feature? I'm inventing here, but you get the idea. So that's the history and the intention, but how to do planning poker. The technique is simple. Get the team together, give them a pack of cards or post-its, show them a user story and have a discussion about it. Then individually, the team members select their numbers and at the same time, show it to each other. All that is left is to marvel at the fact that we will for sure disagree. And through this agreement, we will unveil hidden requirements and clarify some assumptions. But the first thing to do is to first have a scale, a system. What are the numbers going to be? Maybe Fibonacci, maybe t-shirt size, whatever you want really, but keep that scale small. If you wanna tackle complexity, you don't want to just add more complexity. So anything beyond seven or maybe eight sizes, it is, I would say, too much. That's your order of magnitude and humans are pretty bad at going for higher orders of magnitude. So if you're going for t-shirt size, for example, don't start going XXXL because you're making your life a little bit harder with that. Stick to something from extra small to extra large and that should be enough. If you're using Fibonacci, I particularly like to stop at 13, uh, but maybe you could stretch that to 21, meaning when that number is reached, we know it's time to break down our user story. So once again, the stories are in for estimation. The whole team gets together, testers, developers, tech writers, proofreaders, literally the whole team together. That is an important aspect of gaining perspective and gaining insights. So 
Because when I say that I think the story is a five and you say that you think it's a three, what is it that you are missing? Or what is it that I'm overthinking? Once we explain our point of view, we can then reach an agreement on acceptance criteria, how much is too much, and how do I know when it's done? There are a few common questions that come with planning poker, and some of these are, can you use it without numbers? Yes, you can play with things like a, let's go from a watermelon to a mandarin, or let's go from a chihuahua to a German shepherd. Can you estimate without user stories? Yes, just make it about how you create and decompose your work. Maybe those are tasks, maybe those are even tickets that the client directly create on your system. Can you estimate without the cards or post-its or apps? Technically, yes. When you're first starting though, I particularly like to use show of hands, a deck of cards, or anything that kind of creates that surprise element. You see, People will tend to agree with the most likable, the more knowledgeable, or the more senior colleague in the room sometimes if there is no element of surprise. And that kind of agreement might not be the best thing for your product. Not to mention that some people feel anxious when they are the ones constantly disagreeing, which is a good thing, but they don't see it this way, so they remain silent. But with something like the cards or the element of surprise, they can't remain silent. They have to defend their point of view. I've seen many testers shed a lot of light into the discussion with the developers because they could see a ton of hidden complexity behind on how do we actually test this thing. And it was so important and the discussions actually helped us to improve even not only that particular story, but our own way of breaking down stories in our backlog. So I'd say you really want to preserve a little bit of that element of surprise when you're doing planning poker. Can you just average the points? No, the whole point of the discussion is to unveil your requirements and decision making. We will have to decide together if the story stays as a higher number, which means more work, more scope, or if it stays at a lower number, which means a smaller, less scope. Remember, decision making. So that's how I use planning poker, how I see the value and how I taught my teams. Let me know in the comments down below if you do anything different, if you actually do pretty similar, or maybe even if you just have some questions. Now, before we close, let me tell you that you're going to need a baseline for your stories though. To know more about that, check the link in the description below. It's a blog post in which I will help you think through the baseline and Think about the things that you as a coach should look for in a planning poker session. And while you're there, consider subscribing to our newsletter, you know, where all the good stuff is given, exclusive content, discounts, and first notice for events. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.